Okay, uh, today we're going to cover dynamic warm up, uh, which is the opposite of static stretching. Dynamic warm up includes uh, increasing your body temperature and also taking your joints through their uh, range of motion. So the reason we do this as opposed to static stretching is that studies showed us that uh, if you take your muscles through static stretching before an important event, such as a competition or a game that you're gonna play or a workout that you're gonna do, that static stretch will end up reducing the capacity of muscle, uh, uh, muscle force generation. So we would like increasing the mobility, laxity, uh, and lubrication of your joints before uh, doing a, a serious workout. When you plan on doing a, a more lower body emphasized workout, you might want to focus on taking your lower body joints through their range of uh, full range of motion and taking them through a dynamic movement more than upper body and vice versa. So I'm gonna give you options as we go through this warm up process and say this is essential for any workout. And from now on, you might wanna skip this if you are not gonna focus on lower body. And in the end, I'm gonna take you through a core or spine mobility uh, exercises. They are gonna resemble if you took any Pilates classes before, they're gonna resemble some Pilates movements. I love incorporating all the disciplines of uh, sports uh, that I have studied so far. Yoga, you will uh, see some yoga movements, you will see some plyometrics, you will see um, classic weightlifting exercises, Pilates and in general calisthenics and um, conditioning movements in our body sculpting class. So you can fast forward this introduction and just begin with your dynamic warm up. So this part is the essential part for everyone. We're gonna start with breathing and taking the full body through its range of motion, including your spine, upper and lower body, bend your knees. I'm gonna show you from the side as well. Try to keep your neutral, uh, spine as neutral as possible and hold and reach and stretch. <sighs> See, even though it's stretching, it's dynamic stretch. So here, we're also focusing on warming up the finger muscles, if, especially if you're gonna lift and put a grip on things, okay, in your workout. This is important. We're picking up the apples. I'm just lowering my body. You don't have to do that because you wanna be lengthening your body. I just wanna get in the camera. And when we do that, we're gonna, let me just bring my knees down, but don't do that. Just stay standing, extend and stretch, reach, reach, reach with the palms of your hands and lower. Then I'm just going to stand up again and reach forward. Separate the shoulder blades from one another. <sighs> breathe, breathe. Interlace your fingers and push out as you make a, a curl with your back, a C shape. Push your arms out. Then grab your, interlace your fingers behind you and try to extend those arms and lift up to open up your chest in the front. Deep breath, shoulders down and shake out. Good, okay. Now, upper body emphasized, okay? If you're not gonna lift uh, with your upper body that day, you don't, you can skip this part. But I, even though you're going to go for a run, I still think that you should be doing this. I'm sorry, I'm just starting my watch. Um, because you are still using your arms when you're running. So go ahead and get in this scarecrow 
position, which is what I like to call or uh, surrender. So when this in this position, your arms are 90 degrees bent and elbows are leveled with your shoulders and then rotate from the shoulders, okay? Just like this. And with the palms of your hands pushing back and opening back again. So five reps is good. And then bring those elbows together in the front. And when you bring them back to the re to reset, pinch the shoulder blades together as much as you can without compromising from good posture. And reach up and again, put a grip, squeeze as if you're you know, holding on to the ends of a rope and pulling down and elbows pointing, directing down at your hip, hips on the side. And reach out, pull back in, keeping the shoulders leveled with your elbows or the vice versa. Five reps is good enough and reach down, pull up. Pinch the shoulder blades together, elbows, are trying to reach for one another in the back. Of course, that is not possible, but that's why you're aiming. Okay, so, and after that, you're just gonna go through some backstroke, swim motions. But here, you're starting to engage your lower body. Okay, so go ahead and pinch your glutes, abs tight, inner thighs are together, pinch your legs together, and brace yourself so that the body doesn't shift side to side and moves all over the place. It is controlled. And then go ahead and do front crawl and let go. Shake those up and then cross, cross, raise up on the toes of your feet, just like this. And diagonal, couple of those, side to side alternate and up and down switch 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 good shake those arms now this is important this is where we're going to focus on lower body but you can't skip this because it's also important for understanding the hip hinge movement, which is essential for most of your lower body workouts. So here is my hip joint, okay? Where the thigh get, you know, connects my pelvis right here. And there is a, a range of motion that starts from actually zero, okay? When it's fully extended. And I can maybe, go through 120 degrees. So that's the angle when we refer to it as range of motion. So I can go even minus because there's a hyper extension of my hip joint. When I work through my hip joint, what I am, wanna do is to limit the motion to my hip joint, not the lower back, not my knee. So, Hip hinge is also called, I mean, resembles or transferred into deadlift, okay? So I can use my hands by placing the side of my hands on my hip joint, level it with my hips, and just hang the upper body forward, okay? So that's the way you should be doing a hip hinge instead of letting the shoulders fall forward and having a hunch forward position, okay? So open chest, keep the shoulders back, keep your spine not arched, but neutral, okay? Hands here, so it gives you some biofeedback and stretch the back. It's gonna feel on your hamstrings. You can keep your knees slightly bent and come up. When you come up, you really want to emphasize the full hip extension, okay? So when you don't do a go through the full range of motion, it looks like this, and it's not a complete hip hinge. So come up, 
and pronounce that hip uh, extension by uh, squeezing the glutes together. So we're gonna do five of these. Those are your hip hinges to get your hip joint warmed up. Okay, now we're gonna take it down to our knees as well, which is called a squat. So squat starts with the hip hinge, but I'm also gonna flex my knees. So this is gonna resemble a movement of someone trying to sit on a chair. So just think that there is a chair behind me and I wanna put my butt on the chair. So what do I do? I extend my hips back toward the chair, okay? Instead of raising on the toes of my feet and letting my chest fall forward like this, okay? So I'm gonna carry all my weight on my heels. Those two points should be on my heels. You can keep a distance comfortable for you, but generally it's shoulder width apart, not too uh, narrow or not too wide. And ideally keep your toes pointed forward, not turned out. If they're turned out, your knees should follow. That's a different type of squat, which we will cover in the lower body portion. But here, we just wanna keep them parallel, pointed forward. Knees are in line with the second toes, okay? And look at me. If I start this wrong, it's gonna put all the pressure on my knees and my toes. So this is how I can start it wrongly, okay? And I also don't wanna round my back or flex my spine as I reach, okay? Or squat down. So when I squat down, I wanna keep my spine as neutral as possible and start this movement by extending that hip hinge that I just showed you, okay? So the hip hinge, that's your key. Tailbone, tipping back, then I start bending my knees, and carrying my weight with the heels. And then as I come up, I pronounce again the hip extension and the knee extension. That's your squat. Okay, let's go through them for five. I'll show you, show you from the front, okay? So arms always help to balance or maintain the balance too. Then I'm gonna show you from the side, sit back and up. Come up, three, and the other side, four. Knees never come off the floor. I mean, uh, heels, I'm so sorry, not knees. Knees ideally should be kept right above your toe level. They can push a little more than that as, as long as, that's the key, as long as you can keep your heels down, okay? Never lift your heels off the floor. Now, we're gonna do this in a split fashion. This is called a split squat. So the same thing, keep your distance between the feet sideways. Then slide one foot behind you. This is gonna throw your back alignment and arch your back. So you wanna tuck your pelvis under, shoulders back, just adjust everything so you look good and lower the knee down and up. That's a uh, split squat or a stationary lunge. And the heel is the point that pushes against the floor as I try to come up. That is the contact, okay, point. Not your toes and not anywhere else, but the heel in the front. And switch, keeping the distance between the feet sideways or horizontally, and then slide the foot behind you. Again, my contact point being the front heel, I do five of these. Then I open up, let me turn this down, my feet and keep them parallel with one another, pointed toes. I do my hip hinge first and then bend my knees one at a time and add this opposite hand reach movement. 
is I lift, lift the other arm up. But here is the key. See me from the side, okay? I don't flex my spine with this. This is not good for your back. Keep it nice and neutral. Then side to side. <sighs> Dynamic manner. Good. Okay. So there's also another thing that I want to show you, which is also the foundation of a movement that we're going to learn for lower body, which is a cross behind movement. Okay. Courage de lunge is what we call this. So you need to be in the front and take your foot, not just totally behind you like the split squat, but across the midsection, okay, of your body. So let's do this and just, instead of taking alternative steps, just in place, lower that knee down and up as you keep your hips pointed, pointing forward and leveled as much as possible. And let's do the other side with a different view. Okay, cross and pointing forward with my front foot. That concludes my friends, the lower body, the essential part of the lower body. Now, Upper and lower mixed. I love these following moves, okay? They're a little more challenging. Um, you don't have to do them, but highly recommended. Okay, so I'm gonna come to the end of my mat, okay? If you want to, you can bend your knees to reach for the floor. If it is not a problem, Go ahead and do your hip hinge first. Then round your back, gently bending the knees, touch the floor, and take steps with the palms of your hands forward so you are in a flat hand plank position. Then take your steps back without swinging your body side to side. Try to keep it as stable as possible. And two and we'll repeat this for four or five let's keep it short and do four now when i come forward here i can swing forward and backward on my toes then as i'm swinging i'm going to lunge forward with one of my foot Okay, so I'm gonna start with rocking. You don't have to keep the back knee lifted. You can put it down if it feels more comfortable. If you're a beginner, then rocking forward, backward. That's gonna increase the mobility of your knee joint, okay? Feels so good on the hamstring. So either knee lifted or sitting or laying on the mat, we do these. Then with that momentum, you continue. This is a little tough in the beginning, but when you get used to it, it feels so good. As you roll the heel in the back, okay, that's the key. Heel rolls down, you lift the other leg up. Then you stop here and reach your opposite hand up Look up toward the ceiling. This is called the greatest stretch, world's greatest stretch. Then put your hand through this hole that is created with the other arm. I found this on the web. Okay, then lift up this leg one more time and fold it under your other leg. So the, the heel of your front leg is right underneath the groin of your other leg, the back leg. Awesome. Now, I like adding some 
hip rotations here by putting my butt down, lifting it up, put it down and up. Then I put it all the way down, bend the other knee, okay? So they're in front of me. And then I just rock side to side with my knees bent, 90-90 stretch, okay? Then from now, this position, I can change my position, okay? So first I take it to a downward facing dog position. I love this to stretch the posterior chain. So heels down and you push your chest towards your pelvis as you reach your tailbone up and you can make this a dynamic movement by rocking forward and backward between a hand plank and downward facing dog. And as you do this from that momentum, take this foot that you haven't done yet forward and reach up and down one time and then rock. One, two, three, four, five. Now roll your heel in the back and extend this hip. One, two, three, four, and the fifth one, you step and do the world's greatest stretch. <sighs> Threading your hand underneath the other arm. That's a good stretch or rotation for your spine. I like to take it back to downward facing dog and now put my knees down, get into child's pose, curl your toes under, Get up on down dog again. Knees down, repeat these for a couple times. That is great for your shoulders. It's gonna stretch your shoulders as well as your lower body. And when you do this statically, hold it here. That's a great cool down static stretch. Okay, from here, you can stop your warm up because that's enough warm up for you. But like I said in the beginning, there is an option of adding some core movements so that your body is fully ready for heavy loads and um, in some impact that is awaiting, okay? So these are called half rollbacks from Pilates. I love these exercises to get the abdominals awakened and ready for uh, the upcoming challenge. So the feet are flat, flat on the floor. That's the key, guys. Okay, I'll show you. So I need to keep my feet flat, kind of knee hip distance apart, toes down. You can hold your legs to rock back because of the abdominal, lack of abdominal strength in the beginning, okay? So the, the small of your back needs to be the only point that is gonna brush against the mat or touch the mat, get in contact, and then you have to come up right away. Throughout the movement, you wanna keep your back in a C, letter C shape, okay? Just like this, curled and like you're holding a ball in, in your, uh, right here in this hollow space, okay? In front of your belly. So, as you exhale, roll your spine toward the mat to touch your small of the back, not your shoulder blades, not nothing else, and then roll back up. Like I said, if you need to get up with the help of your legs, you can do that. Three, four, five, typically we do these for eight, six, seven, and eight. So go ahead and roll back 
roll on your back all the way. Now I'm going to teach you how to do pelvic tilts. These are the first exercises that your physical therapists will prescribe if you have lower back pain. So put your hands, okay, underneath the, your lower back where it arches and creates the hollow space. So when your back is in neutral shape, you can put your hands underneath. When it's not, you won't be able to find a place to fit your hands. So when it's not means you are tilting it back, okay? To apply pressure on the mat under, that is underneath you. Well, there are wrong ways of doing that and correct ways of doing that, okay? So it's not just rocking your pelvis back and forth. It's engaging your abdominal muscles in the front. How are you going to do that is, I want you to imagine that there's a little kid running in the, in the room that you're working out and you are so afraid that they're gonna run really fast and land on your abdominals, okay? When you are vulnerable, laying on the floor. What do you do as a reflex? When you see that kid coming right at your, low, uh, your belly, what do you do? You brace yourself. That's the way you should be, or, you know, taking a punch in your lower back. That kind of bracing is what I require with this exercise. So when you tilt your pelvis back, you engage your abdominals and brace them. So it, when it, whatever lands on your abdominals, it's not going to hurt you. And that should be aligned with your exhale. So let's focus and do it. As you inhale, come back to neutral. Two more. One more. Good. Now, I want you to hold that position stable. So go ahead and tilt the pelvis back. Knee, bring one knee into your chest, hold it, lift your head up, curl in, and extend the other leg. As you switch, you exhale. Single leg stretch from Pilates. Don't tilt, tip your chin up, keep it tucked in. Lengthen your neck. Good. Now both knees into your chest. You can take a little rest. Put one knee over the other. I mean one ankle over the other knee. Okay. Now lift your hip up and down. That's it. Just five of these. And same leg, uh, sitting on top of the other one, but just cross the legs and lower and lift. Lower and lift. Three is good enough and we'll switch, okay? Lift the hips up and down. These are called hip thrusts. Single leg hip thrusts with no external resistance. Just your body weight and cross your legs and toward the side that is the side of your top leg and three of these, good. Now put your hands through your legs, grab your ankles and rock forward and back. These are called seal in Pilates or rolling like a ball if you were to keep your knees together. These are great uh, massages for your spine before you load your spine with external weight. Good. Then reach forward, get up, and you're ready to rock and roll. 
Thank you for watching. Have a good workout. <laughs>